Hello, it's me. So then it's like, okay, so ultimately whatever you feel, whatever you call yourself is what you are. It's, it's non-binary so... gender fluidity. I can't imagine living life on my truth. That's a scary thought. I am a mother now. My pronouns are they, them. They, them. They, them. They, them. Hello from the other side. I must have called a thousand times to take you outside. Everything that I've done, but when I call you, never seem to be home. You can't. You can't. I'm sorry. Pick one or the other, at least. Hello from the outside. At least I can say that I tried to tell you I'm sorry for breaking your heart. But it don't matter. It clearly doesn't tell you apart anymore. I, I, I think personally I would just avoid any type of gender specific nouns, pronouns, <laughs> um, when it comes to someone who wants to be called they, them. My pronouns are they, them. They, them. They, them. Hello. How are you? Everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am Jen and this is Fundy Fridays and on my channel I talk about different aspects of Christian fundamentalism, American conservative politics, gay stuff. I used to do my makeup, now I just wear makeup. Uh, isn't that growth? Yes, my room is slanted. In fact, my entire house is slanted, but yes, that is why the weird angle. I can't fix it. How are you guys? Um, it has been a while since you've seen me. I have been going through a lot and I appreciate your all's patience and grace in this time. Thank you to the Genonites for being so fucking kind. Thank you to James for filling in for me last week and I know she'll never see this but thank you to my therapist because she is the real MVP of this season of my life. So today we are revisiting the most evil tag team of all time and that would be Paul and Morgan excuse me Today we are revisiting the topic of Paul and Morgan, and I do want to say that I worked really hard on this episode, and even harder on the intro that you just saw, um, a little remix of Morgan singing Hello by Adele, which will actually appear later on in the video, and I did not plan for that. Um, she really likes to uh, show off her voice, um, maybe a little too much. And we all say true. Yeah. You know what? If they're going to see this, potentially, if they're going to react to it, I want to make it worth their time. So I'm making the best damn episode that I could possibly make. I can fucking do this, and I can do this better than anybody else can. And the people need me. So um, there's also, last time I put out a Paul and Morgan video when my channel was a little bitty baby, um, like half of the comments were a bunch of people calling me fat and ugly. <laughs> so, I mean, I am fat, but bitch, I am not ugly. Yeah, so I really think it's way overdue. Let's fucking get into it. Today we are talking about Paul and Morgan Oleges, a married couple from Lexington, Kentucky, who make Christian commentary videos on everybody's favorite God-honoring hell site, YouTube. They have done all kinds of different projects. They've dabbled in podcasts, TikToks, reels. Um, they wrote a book that is... Um, it sure is a book, as well as at one point they ran an online thrift shop called Hollywood Thrifts, which was just run through Instagram, which nothing wrong with that. Just let's stay in our lane here. They are known for their highly problematic takes. I was asking God, like, God, this is total blasphemy. Like, why did you not strike Ariana Grande down as she was recording this video? Like, wow. why did you not strike her wow. down? Seemingly unhappy marriage and their arrogant and oftentimes obstinate behavior on social media. And they have a sense of biblical audacity that rivals only that of Lot's daughters. 
I have contractual obligations. So I hope you enjoy today's sponsor, which is Casetify. Well, as you can see, today we were going to try and have a little fun, film our ad in a blizzard. But once again, Missouri lets us down and produces a sad, wet, slushy thing that no one likes. And while we may be ashamed of the state that we come from, we are proud partners of Casetify, the world's top brand for high quality mobile protection and convenient accessories. So from the snappy wireless charging to the rock solid mobile mounting for your vehicle, you won't be left out of the MagSafe experience with a Casetify clear case on your phone. And y'all, Casetify have put all their phone protection expertise into creating their most requested product ever the best clear case on the planet. These cases are optimized for anti-yellowing, so unlike those cheap cases you get online at big box stores and all that nonsense, these aren't gonna yellow on you, and they're also UV protected with Casetify's optimized technology, so no blurring either. And yet this whole sleek form factor is still delivered with 6.6 .6 feet of drop protection and tested to the same military grade specifications that Casetify prides themselves on. And since it's Casetify, even your new clear case can be customized and printed with an incredible variety of patterns, prints, and other customization options like we can see here. Jen and I actually recently drop tested one of our own Casetify cases in a place that doesn't suck, the sunny beaches of Mexico. You'll be able to see here that this phone case can hold up to whatever your vacation throws at it. As you can see, my phone is currently working. Beautiful picture of Janet, a wedding we attended recently. And now, for the drop test. A little dusty, but that's still my baby. So with a Casetify case, it doesn't matter whether you're in sunny Mexico or in a terrible place like this, wiping the world's saddest snow cone off your car, you know that your phone will be protected from the elements. Thanks so much to Casetify for sponsoring this video. Go to casetify.com slash Fundy Fridays right now to get 15% off of your next order of the best phone case you'll ever have. And now, back to the video. Also, I would like to shout out uh fundy wikia and of course reddit for archiving all this shit um we have really come a long way from the dark ages of snark having to go through pages and pages on random forums trying to piece this shit together so thank you guys um so let's start off with the patriarch of the family as is proper um paul olegez was born on september 4th 1989 he is the son of joe and Lee Ann olegez he has two siblings Stephen and Julia. Paul grew up in a Christian home where he was homeschooled. He became a Christian at the age of 14. He had quite a few interesting jobs that you probably wouldn't expect. Um, number one, he was either a substitute teacher or a full-on elementary school teacher. I can't confirm either way. It's one of those like things that, you know, um, but he does have pictures on his social media of when he was a teacher, which is also like, hey, why are you putting pictures of kids online? He was also going to cosmetology school and at one point he was a model um as you can see in this picture right here he had a friend who is asian and uh that's cool two latinos cool like great there's a reason why we call him fundy zoolander like he's really vapid and vain and um he has a very self-inflated ego Morgan Hawley was born December 15th, 1994. She is the daughter of Charles and Tina Hawley. She grew up in Kentucky. Morgan says she grew up Christian, but um, didn't get baptized until she was 12. And then she became more involved in the church as she got older. From what I have gathered from uh, little comments here and there and their videos, it seems that she might have been a worship leader at her church, which is really interesting because you don't actually hear a lot about that in her time on the channel. And seeing as how now they've distanced themselves from charismatic Christianity, I wonder if maybe she's ashamed of that or what the reason is. But she talks about how she used to work at the church and to be super involved, but she was living a double life because she was sleeping with her boyfriend behind the scenes and struggling with her faith. You know, normal things that a lot of people go through. She went to public school for the longest time until middle school where she was severely bullied. She says that that is kind of the 
start starting point of her mental illnesses. Morgan started being homeschooled and she said she really took off uh, academically after that. In fact, she said that they are going to homeschool slash co-op homeschool the new baby. So that will be an interesting journey for us to watch because you know she's going to show us. Yes. So uh, a big thing about Morgan is that she struggles with a lot of different mental illnesses. She has specifically mentioned borderline personality disorder a few times, um, as well as some severe anxiety. Um, in one video I watched, she said that she used to have a service dog because her anxiety would get so bad. So that's pretty fucking rough, Morgan. Um, and I'm glad you're feeling better, but it is highly troubling and problematic when you say stuff like mental illness is caused by sexual sin. It's interesting because so many people of who you know maybe identify as a christian and who identify as not will say sex before marriage is fine it's amazing it's great it's absolutely necessary to find your spouse and to that i say do you struggle with depression do you struggle with anxiety do you struggle with blah 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 and people aren't going to like this, but no, I don't they care. Will not. Um, and if the answer is yes, then I'm just going to say, I don't want to hear from you. Because whoa, whoa. when you are struggling with these really like heavy things, these mental illnesses, these very heavy things, and you're living in sin... But yet you're saying it's totally fine and it doesn't affect me in any way, shape, or form. I just don't believe that. I don't believe that. I believe that if you stopped having sex outside of marriage, that your depression might lessen. And I know you guys are going to like go off on me. It's fine. You can. But I, from personal experience, living in sexual sin was literally being eaten alive and destroyed by depression, by anxiety, by panic attacks. I was throwing up for 18 to 20 hours a day sometimes, literally multiple times a month because I was so sick mentally and physically because of the crap that I was living in. And as soon, literally you guys, the day that I said I'm done with this and I walked away from that, like, my depression did not totally go away yet, but it lifted like a weight off of me. It was gone because I stepped away from that sin. And I had a journey that I still had to walk through to fully become free of depression and anxiety. But that was the door that I had to walk through and the door that opened up freedom to me. Um... The first step was getting out of sin, living living in sin. And so I just don't really want to hear from people who are like, it doesn't do anything to you, but then they're living in like darkness all the time. It's like, why would you ever take advice from a person who is living in such darkness? It's also really upsetting when Morgan says stuff like the clip I'm about to show you where she says that, her therapist told her that you it's impossible to overcome depression and that you have to live with it your whole life, which, you know, I'm no fucking expert, but I understood what she was talking about. Um, you can't pray away a chemical imbalance or you can't just will yourself uh, through trauma. Um, people need therapy, people need meds, and that's okay. And... Um, she was just talking shit about coping skills and just acting like this therapist was stupid. And it really was pissing me off because I don't know if she went to a licensed professional or if she went to some fucking religious guy at her church, but it really sounded like a story that just doesn't sit right with me. So I will play you the clip and you can determine for yourself what went wrong here. But I'm, I'm just really uncomfortable with this. And I think that she is... Um, naive and she needs to let people help her. I remember when it, you got to a very, very low place early in our marriage and we went and we saw uh, somebody who was an expert and I'm not taken away from their, their expertise, but her counsel was 
just listen, listen, Morgan, you need to accept that you're always going to, I'm not sure her exact words, but like, you're always going to have depression and you just need to learn how to cope with it, but it's always going to be there. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's what you're, or maybe it is kind of, but I heard you just say like, I realize this may be something that I have to like war against to an extent, but I I do want to draw the distinction. You are a completely different person. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> I <am. laughs> yeah, it's interesting. I when we had that meeting with a counselor, therapist, person, um, that was when I was really at my lowest, and they were just telling me, like, yeah, I just want you to understand because I, she said, what is your goal? Because um, I was going to po- possibly start doing this therapy with this person and she was like what's your goal that you want to see out of these therapy sessions and i said well i want to see me completely um set free of depression and anxiety and she was like okay well i just want to let you know that you'll never be set free of depression you're never going to overcome depression it's something you live with for the rest of your life but you can learn coping mechanisms of this or that and Immediately, I was just like, okay, we're done here. (laughs) Um, I'm leaving. But I, and then the next day, like, is when God really, really moved in my life um, in a very large way. But yeah, I am not coping with depression or anxiety anymore. I'm not using techniques that I used to have to use when I would start going into like a panic attack or any, like a downhill downward slope whatever of depression yes spiral of depression like I had tools that I would use kind of mentally physically things that I would do to like get myself out of that stuff I don't have to do that anymore and so that's kind of what tells me of like I'm not living with depression or coping with depression it's gone but the enemy likes to try to like sneak in (laughs) <laughs> or blatantly walk in. Morgan also uh, recently went through a fairly traumatic birth. She hasn't talked a lot about it, but I can tell from bits and pieces that her faith has been shaken. And she's definitely somebody that I am concerned about with postpartum uh, mental health issues. And I just, no matter what the beef is with her, I just do not wish anything bad on her and i really hope that she gets help and support with those issues yeah it's been a weird couple of years watching them grow anyway just had a moment let's talk about morgan's music career which is hilarious and impressive oh what's wrong with being what's wrong with being what's wrong with being I just looked and she doesn't have any CDs because I would totally purchase one. But anyway, Morgan does have a really good voice. Um, It's very Halsey uh, type of singing that was popular in the 2010s. So Morgan was a part of this. It sounds like it's a contest, but it's not. It's just like a group that produces um, covers of popular songs. I don't know how they got the rights to this music, but Morgan and a bunch of other artists were a part of this company that does You Idol that Morgan was on. They used to produce music for commercials. So this is a weird situation. But anyway, Morgan recorded a bunch of covers and went to Miami like every two weeks. She said that not only was she peer pressured by all of the atheist Florida boys in the music production, but they pressured her to sing inappropriate songs. And she said she had to fight because she did not want to sing Cool for the Summer by Demi Lovato. Uh, She wanted to sing her own music, which that's not what this is, Morgan. You guys are making um, covers, presumably for commercials. Something that's really interesting is they interviewed all of the You Idol people Um, beforehand, and this is like a biography of Morgan that I had never heard before. Hey guys, I'm Morgan Holly. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. You and me were made a vow For better or for I uploaded those videos probably in August, and I uploaded them because I don't have a Facebook and I wanted my grandparents to be able to see them. I never intended them to be seen by anyone, really. I have like maybe a hundred views on them and that's probably from my grandma and grandpa watching it over and over. (laughs) Here I am. 
My sisters and my brother are my best friends, and so I spend a lot of time with them just being goofy and silly at the house. <laughs> I don't really try to be silly. I'm just, that's me. I'm just weird. <laughs> I was in public school from preschool to seventh grade. And the end of seventh grade, my mom and dad decided to take me out of public school and homeschool me. There was just a lot of mean people who I'm sure had problems at home and so they come to school and they take it out on people who might not have as many problems or don't show those problems and I was one of those people who got it taken out on me, so it got to a point where I just couldn't really handle it. When I was bullied and for years after, I kind of like, I don't know, I was angry inside and frustrated and confused. I didn't understand why I always was the one to be bullied. The older I get, the more I want to share that with other kids, just letting them know that they're important and that if they don't believe in themselves, they need to know that other people believe in them. I believe in them. I just want to try my hardest to remind those kids that they're important. I'm Morgan Holly, and this is You Idol, the place where you can bring out your inner superstar. But anyway, I know you guys came here for uh, the wonderful music. So uh, here is a little clip of Morgan singing The Night is Still Young by Nicki Minaj. <laughs> Enjoying the ride? Is there a problem, officer? What's the hurry? The night's still young. Sorry, I was going Sir, to- Sir, I'm gonna need you to step out of the car. Up against the car. Spread your feet. You got any weapons on you? Turn around. You're coming with me. And I know where we're going. Drive. We will remember this day. So drop the pop and get low. We can drop the top and just cruise. We fresh to death to the shoes. Only model in life is gonna love. I never worry. Life is a journey. I just want to enjoy. She made lots of friends and had a good time, she says, but um, some of the atheist boys were bullies. Finally, I like, got to a point where I had become friends with several of the people, and so we'd go out to dinner, whatever. Um, and that was a lot of fun. But I do see like how their way of life really did start to take a toll on me. None of them were believers. Not a single one down there were believers. Um, actually, they were like, some of them were hardcore atheists and like, would make fun of me for believing in God. Like every time I was down there, I was mocked multiple times, all the time on set, in the studio, like somehow or another, they would like bring up, oh, Morgan, Miss Giddy Two Shoes, blah, blah, blah. Well, I'll be partying up in hell with the devil. Like saying things like that. And it's just like, okay. It was, it was challenging. It was very hard, especially like I was 19. I was young. I was down there trying to figure out my own life while they're telling me how to live my life. You know, my whole experience with 
this label and whatnot was really cool because looking back on it, it's grown me a lot and it's given me so much kind of worldly experience of what it is like, what it looks like to live in the world. <laughs> Obviously, I live in the world right now, but you know what I mean? I don't know if that makes any sense, but I just was surrounded by this very secular world and saw like how hard it is to keep your faith when you are in this world, working there, living there, friends with people there. Like, it's really, really hard, um, especially as a young person. It makes me that much more hesitant to listen to secular music. Like, guys, I'll be honest, and I've shared this plenty of times before, I don't really listen to secular music anymore at all because I just don't think that it's beneficial to my spirit personally. After she left You Idol, uh, Morgan made a couple other songs um, and put them on her own YouTube channel, and some of them are cute. Yesterday, girl met a boy in the whole wide world was flipped upside down. My personal favorite song that Morgan sings is an original song called Your Tiny Fingertips And Your Baby Lips Your Eyes Haven't Opened But Here's To Hope Say That You Don't Get A Choice you don't have a voice. When I want to learn how to do something on a video editing program, I'll do a little project. I'll like make an intro or do a song or like whatever. And I wanted to learn how to key stuff out and, you know, make it transparent. So I edited Morgan's song and added a few elements to it. Um, and I felt at the time that it was too blasphemous. For the public to see so i put it on patreon and i think it's only appropriate that i show it to you all now because it's been two years and i'm talking about it so um here's my remix of the abortion song your tiny fingertips and your baby lips i got an uh, abortion Baby probably has a beating heart, you know. It can heal pain. I am filled with Christ's love. Boys. My babies. They're killing my babies. Apparently, both of them are convinced that they got tender as a joke. Um, and that they weren't going to meet anybody because it was a joke. But anyway, um, they met each other and apparently Morgan said that she liked to cuddle on her profile and Paul thought that that made her sound loose. Please. In her bio, it oh. said something like, I like to snuggle. Or cuddle or, or something. Or cuddle. Or, and so I look at that and I'm just like, pass. It, that just sounds, I'm just going to be honest, it just sounds loose to me. It did. He also said that he thought about breaking up with her over a movie that she watched. She told me uh, a movie that she watched previous to us dating and I almost dumped her. <laughs> you did not. I, I didn't almost dump her, but I, I, I literally like, I think I reflected on that for like days. And I was like, okay, who am I dating here? It, it did show like her standards were disappointingly <laughs> low or maybe just naive. Leave a comment down below. Uh, what movie do you think she watched that was so bad that Paul almost dumped her? Uh, 
anyway, these these two are just such a wonderful couple to emulate, don't you think? But nothing compared to our first year of marriage. Honestly, I feel like God was like, hey, guys, we're just gonna like go ahead and put you through a lot of pain that like most married couples don't deal with for like years and years into their marriage. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and get that over with. Their first date was at a book fair. Um, and I wonder since Paul was a teacher at the time, if it was a scholastic book fair, I don't know if there are people who don't know what that is, but it's, um, kind of messed up. If you think about it, it's where like a scholastic books will bring in, like they'll make a store at your elementary school and you have to spend upwards to 30, $40 on these books. I remember we used to watch, like they would wheel in the, the big ass VCR and the tube TV and we would watch a commercial for the books at the book fair and then we would have time to go buy books like we would spend time that was supposed to be for instruction on buying these books and if you only had like a couple dollars maybe you could get an eraser what a what an idea to, let's let's soft launch capitalism on these kids they met on tinder but now they advertise a christian dating app called higher bonding which is a fantastic name i'm really getting tired of this dating app cruella jezebel sarah okay here we go Simple Christian girl with just the right amount of naughty. I'm gonna be single forever. I'm done. Well, hang on a minute. What's up, guys? I'm Paul. I'm Morgan, and we met through online dating. Granted, it was not a Christian dating app. The app that we met on, there was just a lot of like swipe and swipe and swipe, and this person might be good. Ooh, uh, doesn't look like they have the same vision. Which is why we're super excited to share with you all HireBond.com. It's a new online Christian dating website built for Christian singles who value their faith as the driving force in their relationship. This site focuses on quality matches and engagement over quantity. We should know that online dating can work and we actually highly recommend it. Try this out. If you're a Christian looking for love, check out HireBond.com. I even have a clip here of Paul saying that he's mean to Morgan and she can't do anything about it. Sometimes when I've done something or said something to Morgan that's been so hurtful and in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh, it's nice knowing, it's nice knowing that she can't go anywhere. <laughs> okay, that doesn't give you the right to say mean things I to your wife. I feel guilty about it. Now, I'm sure they're both going to say that that was just a joke, but... Behind every joke is an implication. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, Morgan definitely got Paul back by farting on his face. So one night, we're all about to go to bed. Yeah. Me and Paul in this pull-out couch thing of his brother and his two kids up in this other area. They decide, <laughs> all four of them, decide to like let them rip right before we go to sleep. This is way too many details. <laughs> so... I decide I'm over it. I've gone two years. I have not allowed my husband to witness this. I'm done. I literally jump on him. I sit on his face and I fart <laughs> in his face. <laughs> that is way too many details. They needed to know why I decided to do that. Guys, because the that's question vulgar that I sat on his face and I farted, but I needed you guys to understand why I was led to do this. <laughs> this question should really be, Paul, how are you doing <laughs> since this happened? Like They had extreme physical boundaries with each other when they first started dating. Makes sense for a fundy couple. Notably, their first kiss was after Paul asked Morgan's dad for permission to marry her and they wouldn't even hold hands until they were engaged. Their engagement story is pretty cute. Paul read a Winnie the Pooh book to her and then like the ring was inside the book. I wrote down in my neatest handwriting, right in the middle, I said, just then four words popped into Pooh's head. I love you, M. And I'm still like this and Paul like nudges me and was like, look at that. Nothing made sense. He asked me, he's like, can you read this? I, I, had, I had her read this. I had like, her read this. I'm like, Paul, I don't want to read. And he's like, they just want this one page, and I was like, ah! So, I was she like, gets to this part. Ain't nobody in the world but you and I, Pooh mumbled to the wind. She reads her favorite song lyrics. I was like, in a Winnie the Pooh book. All I said was, that's cute. She says, that's cute. All and right. She goes, can you turn the page? I had her yeah. turn the page. Like, So 
by this time, Chris is suddenly right in the middle, like a paparazzi. <laughs> I got down on my knee, <clears throat> and I said, <coughs> crying a little bit. I said, Morgan Renee Holly, I said your middle name. Okay, yeah. Will you marry me? And what did you do? Thank you, Lord, for giving me the strength to persevere even in the midst of a hangry, <laughs> crazy woman. After a short courtship, Paul and Morgan got married. You know, they look like little, little evangelical models here in this picture. The most notable thing about their wedding is that due to nerves and apparently it was super hot and balmy, whatever the reason, Morgan threw up uh, in the middle of Paul's vows. Um, so here's that. Go back. July 15th. It was hot. Oh, it was so hot. It was blazing. The photographers drove together and they came a little late. <laughs> they were so late. I guess there were some hiccups. There were just the normal wedding stuff. The groomsmen. You all come in together. We come in together and we do this cool little like snapping and moving our... If you were falling. Nice, keep going. Then I would catch you. That was really cute. Everyone would look back on this day that was like part of the wedding and would say, Morgan was so calm. She wasn't a bridezilla. She was all smiles. And that's what's so crazy about yeah. what happens next. I can't leave our family could love you well in my own state. I'm too weak to love you in my own state. She might hold her. She's getting sick. It's just hard. You know? It's very emotional. I don't know about you, but I feel like the guy talking behind the camera and narrating is more embarrassing than the actual vomiting. And I thought through this and I was going to say, like, that I can't take care of you, but I know God can and he's going to use me and empower me. So I read the vows and this is what came out. Morgan, I know that I can't take care of you. <laughs> right That's then, right when I ran she off. snapped. So for that, the whole time she was out of the room throwing up, I was in my mind, I just told Morgan, I can't take care of her. <laughs> and she literally fled the stage. After these two lovebirds got married, they started their channel. Um, then Paul Morgan, and Morgan, Paul and Morgan, Morgan show. show. Famously, in Paul and Morgan's lore, Paul was a virgin and Morgan was a normal person who had sex before marriage and that's okay. Like, they keep going on with this narrative that, like, you know, she was healed and God forgave her so that Paul needs to forgive her, but he's not holding it over her head, yet she insists that she apologize because he's not her first, and it's just, like, disgusting purity mind games, and it just, the, it just increases the shame and guilt, um, on people like Morgan, and it's really unfair. It was more like, okay, she's not a virgin. Is she at a different place than she was when she had sex before marriage. Has she changed? Has she learned? And real quick, some of you guys are gonna say, Paul, you have no right to, like Morgan does not need to ask you for forgiveness. Paul, you have no right to have Morgan like ask for forgiveness or whatever. Again, guys, like you can say what you will. I was not holding it like as judgment over her, but at the same time, there is such a thing as asking for forgiveness. And you know, when you're looking to marry someone and you've you know, sin in an area, like, first off, you better have asked for forgiveness to God. Humble yourself. Stop No matter living. what the sin was, whether yeah. it was sex or whatever. If you fall, if you sin, if you're living in habitual sin, like, you better be repenting and asking for forgiveness. So you guys cut that out. Humble yourself. Stop <laughs> living in so much pride. Second, I do think it's appropriate to ask the person that you may end up marrying for forgiveness for a sin you've committed that is probably going to affect them to some level. So if it had been reverse and I had sinned in that area, for me to be like, hey Morgan, I just want you to know that I have had sex before marriage. I'd like to, to ask for your forgiveness. Like, I don't see anything wrong with that. 
Yeah. Like Paul said, it was a sin that I committed that was going to affect us, our marriage, our relationship. Like, so he absolutely deserved to know. And it was my choice to ask for his forgiveness. It's not like he was like, well, are you going to ask me to yeah. forgive you? Right. That was not it. Like, it was my choice to, to ask for forgiveness. I decided to humble myself. I decided to lay down my pride. I decided that this guy is important to me and I want him to know that I am sorry that he's not going to be my first. Like, I'm sorry you didn't get to be my first. Like, holy purity culture, Batman. What we have here is a shame spiral so deep, I swear it could have drilled its way to China by now. She doesn't need your little comments, Paul. It's bad enough that she sees you as a metaphorical and a literal Christ figure in her life. God totally had a plan because I met Paul and I saw... I saw God through Paul. Um, <laughs> it's like so funny because thinking back on our first date, it's kind of like I was sitting with Jesus the entire time that on that date because <laughs> I literally like poured everything out to Paul on our first date. Like I told him everything. This next clip that I would like to show you is from uh, a video where they're, they're filming a normal episode and they get into a fight and they leave it in because they want to show how a real couple fights and it is incredibly uncomfortable. It is so awkward and like unnecessary. You can show, you know, working through a disagreement, but God, this is bad. Okay, no, 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 we're not putting this in the video. We need to work on this. Alright, I hear what you're saying. Just move on. It's fine. We need to move on. It's fine. We did not literally find any hope or closure to that little scenario. So, uh, remember that next time you get into a fight with your spouse, that it could be a lot stupider. So, I asked him, I was like, Polly, are you sad? Did you not like it? Did you have expectations that I didn't reach? And he was just like, oh, I was just really hoping I was, we were gonna get a massage. <laughs> I was like. And I, I felt like a total, total jerk saying that. I did. Another one of the um, causes that uh, Paul and Morgan are really passionate about is their anti-progressive Christianity stance. They see it as a bunch of uh, fake Christians who want to have orgies and still get into heaven. And I think a good part, a good slug of the Christian progressive movement is how can I satisfy my emotions, my flesh, my wants and desires, I don't like being told no, and then still fit that idea into some type of Christian bubble that says, but I still love Jesus. And I'm still gonna get to heaven when I die. The problem is that they don't understand pluralism um, and that other people can also be Christians and not believe exactly as they do. It's a simple concept, but you know, it takes them time to understand things. Michael, I'm glad you mentioned you know, the sexual immorality aspect, because I do think that is one of the issues that's on the forefront here. When I see someone saying, I'm a very big advocate for progressive Christianity, what I see pretty quickly after that is the person is living a lifestyle that the Bible would call sexual immorality. They're saying, God told me that this is okay, or they may be saying that the Bible is outdated in this area. It's really more about getting down to Jesus's actual teachings, which include a prototype of socialism, radical acceptance of minorities, and an actual tangible, provable, intentional love for your neighbors. They don't make an idol out of purity and bigotry, which 
your denomination keeps obsessing over, somebody like Morgan would probably be happier in a progressive Christian church where she wouldn't be given vague prophecies that somebody made up. She wouldn't be slut shamed and the music would actually be good. What do I know? I'm, I'm just a queer, overweight, sexually broken reverend. Hate it or love it. What are you going to do, haters? I want to take this little bit here to do a side tangent. Um, they have this friend who I think they lived with for a while named Michael. <laughs> and he, he just like, like, he is just some guy. And also go subscribe to Michael, you guys. He's got a channel where he actually really hits on the social topics and does an awesome job with that. We'll link his stuff below. Let's get to it. So I had to know what this dude's deal was because they were like, check out his YouTube channel. So I checked it out and he is... Um, but from Russia invading Ukraine to just the COVID craze the last two years to even uh, what's going on right now in our country with the economy, with uh, the integrity of our elections, with, uh, you know, things that are true being trampled on and things that are false being exalted as truth. It's almost like you're up is down and down is up. It's like a, a, a twilight zone. It, it's really like the matrix. Okay. Um, there's one part in the matrix where, uh, Neo asks Morpheus, uh, why do my eyes hurt so much? And then Morpheus tells Neo because you've never used them before. And that to me is such a profound quote. As for Paul and Morgan's other religious beliefs, I think it's probably safe to assume that they are young earth creationists. After all, they did go to the very same creation museum that I went to back in May. All right, Morgan, we are sitting here waiting for a reptile snake show. While we wait, what are your thoughts on the creation museum? Pretty awesome. Uh, my favorite have been the miniature dioramas of the Ark. Yeah. Like, literally, they were like tiny little elephants and tinier people. Okay, okay, speed it up <laughs> with your tiny. That's what I love the best. <laughs> you, one thing you mentioned, isn't it interesting how you can come here and they just so boldly and confidently speak like, this is... The Bible is true, creation is true, the biblical account of creation, but then you can go to D.C. and go into the, what museum was that? Whatever the I don't know. big museum yeah. in D.C. was, and it's like the polar opposite, where they're all talking about evolution. the evolution billions of years old. Billions, billions! We believe <laughs> this. Paul and Morgan uh, have a lot of issues when it comes to uh, race relations. Um, notably, they have racist views. Sometimes it's just dog whistles, and sometimes it's, like, overt. Check out this video of Paul, like, having a fucking conniption over the fact that there were multiple interracial couples in the new Lord of the Rings show. In the new Rings of Power series, and then you see, like, a... Uh several interracial couples and I'm fine with that like you know what unless it feels just ridiculously pushed on us mm -hmm. I'm fine with that but I feel like there is a lot of people that are just over the wokeness mm -hmm. they are over the wokeness being force-fed to us and Netflix shows and all of these new shows and so they're kind of like already on edge and so they go into this show and then they see okay well there's an interracial couple from the i don't know what the official name was but they're ultimately like hobbits mm -hmm. fine oh and then there's another interracial couple fine and then there's another interracial couple and it's kind of like okay it's getting a little exhausting the interracial uh what was it dwarf couple and it's mm -hmm. like it's it's starting to feel a little excessive and i'm not saying that in in any way racist it's just like how many are you gonna put like, I don't care at all, but I could see where some of the pushback maybe is coming from. Right. They're obviously doing it on purpose, but personally, to me, I went in with zero expectations and I had no idea that they were, like, intentionally, like, trying to push this or whatever. Really? So you didn't even, like, chuckle the third interracial couple that popped up? I did not think about it at all. I just don't care. I I don't know. I just enjoy it. At some point, it just gets kind of goofy. And I'm not, again, saying that in any way other than just like, come on, like how many? It's just, you, you chuckle at it. To me, there's just way more woke shows out there. I personally did not find this, these two episodes at least, 
uh, woke or like in your face woke or like work gonna push this down your yeah. throat there, like there are so many shows out there that are doing that and it's so annoying and so gross and so just like dumb in my opinion perhaps i don't know like a lot of interracial couples which is just kind of funny to me this footage is now deleted um and it is where paul and morgan are reacting to this actress gina carino who was in the mandalorian i don't know i've never fucking seen it and she tweeted some really problematic shit comparing being conservative to being um hunted by the uh secret police paul and morgan reacted exactly the way that you think they would but it has been archived so i want to say thank you so fucking much to user soft spock on Fundy Snark Uncensored for archiving this this clip. Uh, they said, her social media posts denigrated people based on their culture and religious identities. They're abhorrent and unacceptable, the statement read. Okay, so that's the, um, let's see, let's just see, we're gonna get to this in a minute, were her posts abhorrent? Mm -hmm. Or yeah. did they not like them because, oh wow, she happens to be an outspoken conservative and she's a little sassy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, here's the thing. I do not like it when people start trying to compare like what we're going through to the Holocaust. Like, be quiet. That's not you have no idea. We have no idea what it's like what the Holocaust survivors and people who lost their lives went through. Um, so don't do that. That's uh, not okay. Um, I did like the way Ben Shapiro, maybe we could link the video after this or something in the description, but Ben Shapiro talked about it in his little clip of... And Ben's a Jew. I... A Jewish man who practices Judaism. Um, and so if he's not offended by her tweets, right. but we'll, we'll get to that. And he also just shared like, I'm not okay with people comparing things to the Holocaust. Don't do that. But that's not what this was. It was comparing, it but it was wasn't. not in an anti anti Semitic way. Yes, and it wasn't saying we're the people on the right who are being canceled are like the people who are the Jewish people who are being taken into the concentration. Well, and we'll camps. get to it that's here right. in just a minute, and then you guys yeah. can decide for yourself. Yeah. Um, but was it anti Semitic? No. Was it perhaps? To, did she did she go too far? Did she maybe draw a comparison that is like, okay, that's a little extreme. Sure. All right, what was the tweet? And then in quotations, because history is edited, most people today don't realize that, or don't realize that to get to the point where Nazi soldiers could easily round up thousands of Jews, the government first made their own neighbors hate them simply for being Jews. How is that any different from hating someone for their political views. Mm -hmm. So, I understand why people would say, oh, I mean, one, she didn't really, like, say a certain political party. She didn't say conservatives, like, mm -hmm. we're being trained to hate conservatives. Um, she's not specifically talking about that. And also, I think that, you know, again, let's be careful with comparing our lives to the Holocaust people and their lives. But... I don't think she was necessarily saying, like, I mean, we heard what she said. I think she was trying to make a point of, hey, look, our government and the media and our world that we're in right now is trying to train us to literally hate people and attack them and, and shame them, seem, them right, make them and ridicule them. They are trying to demonize half of the country which are conservatives mm -hmm. or if you're somehow in your in my opinion your weird mind thinking that that was anti-semitic because i definitely don't i don't see it yeah, it's um, just not. i don't really know why i have to be the one to say this but paul and morgan you don't get to decide what is and isn't anti-semitic uh, it's not really up to you, um, but I guess I would say I am glad that you deleted half of this live because I don't want it to infect the rest of YouTube with your bigotry. I'm fucking done. But it's like, no, race, 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 mm -hmm. or gender, 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 gender. Did you believe that they're also incredibly fat phobic? How do you guys really feel about postpartum bodies? Scars, stretch marks, saggy skin, belly. Mm, posty bods. That's that's what we guys call them, posty bots. What are you gonna say to that, buddy? 
Three months postpartum over here. Okay. okay. Here's the thing. You <laughs> have done a great job. Mm. But it's kind of like postpartum. This question would be for married couples. Mm-hmm. Assuming that you did it the right way. <laughs> had your children within oh <laughs> wedlock. But no, um, there are some relationships where, and it's not just the woman, one of the parties kind of lets themselves go. Let's just be real. <laughs> one of the parties. <laughs> one of said parties lets themselves go some, and suddenly the person you married is, say, 60 pounds heavier than they were when you married them. It can be challenging. And since this question is specifically for the guy, again, it could go both ways. For the guy, sometimes that can be something that's, I mean, speaking for myself, like, that would be a challenge. Yeah. And, you know, like, it's one thing if it's a pregnant woman. It's another thing if she's no longer pregnant. If she's... She's just chowing down on things. If this is, yeah, nine months after the baby, and it's like, wow, huh. She's gained more weight since but I, being pregnant. Oh, I can't lose the weight. And then shoving Oreos and they're <laughs> continue it. Uh, why don't you sign up to lose weight with Paul's dad? We want to take you guys through a 21-day program called Trainer Joe's. Not Trader Joe's. Trainer, Trainer. Joe's. 21-day transformation program. Yeah, it's to help you lose weight and get healthier. We're not made to be overweight. God expects certain things from us and we should expect them of ourselves. And that's to, to be reasonable in the way that we eat and move. And our culture allows us to really be indulgent. And I think that we have conformed to that. Whether you're a believer or not, even science would say, hey, you're not supposed to weigh this much. This is hard on your body. And as a Christian, we, we tend to eat and keep eating and we ate somebody else's food. And now we're carrying around a whole other person with us. I mean, that's kind of how I look at it. Like, why are we doing that? Isn't it interesting that we live in a culture right now, if you challenge someone on being overweight, it's so often fat shaming. If you challenge someone on disagreeing with political views or your spiritual views, faith views, shaming, shaming, shaming. Can we talk about this in a way that we are showing that we love and truly care about you and we're not coming across harsh or beating you over the head? Because we both know there are areas in our lives that we're still asking God help us with, or maybe we just don't even know and it's just kind of a blind spot. At least people who engage in pyramid schemes sell you an actual product sometimes. Like, I don't know why anybody would give money to Paul's dad. If I wanna hear how fucking fat I am, I can just go to my comment section and that's free. My initial response, it says, this is healthy. And I'm looking at that, Cosmopolitan, promoting this to women that are obviously uh, very heavy saying this is healthy and then like we read earlier it said like they're describing what is healthy for them well first off there's hypocrisy because i'm sure cosmo has been totally up in arms about the covid related stuff how we need to be healthy and be safe mm-hmm. and yet they flip the script and they're saying this is healthy this is what healthy can look like I'm, I'm sorry but just again just being real like anyone that's done any research with common sense knows that an obese person that obesity is not as healthy by a long shot as someone who is in shape. And so for them trying to feed us this in the midst of a pandemic where they're all up in arms about one side of health and then trying to promote obesity as being healthy, I was thinking to myself, cosmopolitans should be ashamed of themselves. It is shameful in my opinion. It's like, this is what we have come to. This is what we're pushing as healthy. Like when Paul showed me the cover of that and stuff, I was literally like, is Cosmo like literally trying to kill people off the world? Like that's where my mind went. Conspiracy. Reduce the population. But like literally, that's what I'm thinking. Like why are we pushing all of these things? Why during a pandemic could you go into the grocery and buy all the junk food you can and you can still go to mcdonald's during the pandemic but you can't go to the gym i love how they're trying to do a gotcha there like why don't the sjw's care about being fat the way they care about covid um because you can't catch fat um but you can catch these hands so this informs if not exacerbates the rampant fat phobia on the channel and in evangelical and in american and in worldwide culture uh people just hate fat people. Mushy? Mushy's fat, but that's a good thing. Like patriarchy, fat phobia does not just affect one group. It affects everyone. And it corrupts everything that it comes in contact with, like self-image issues, dangerous eating patterns, 
Um, appearances seem to be a huge part of the culture they're a part of. This only further contributes to the accusations that Paul and Morgan are shallow, appearance-obsessed bozos. We just don't need these assholes trying to sell you Paul's dad's program, and we certainly don't need them to tell us how to live our lives or what is or isn't healthy. They are just two random people online. You need to remember that. Oh my god. <laughs> This next section is uh, transphobia and homophobia. Um, in this next clip, Paul compares homosexuality to alcoholism. Did Christians attend a gay wedding, I think is what it's titled. He said, you know, this is not a rejection of the person. And if they see it that way, that's going to be on them. But it's not a rejection of the person. It's a rejection of what the person is doing and what they're going to live in. And we can't support that. And actually, Alan gave a couple good parallels. He said, you know, are you going to take an alcoholic to a bar to drink with them to show them that you support them? No. Mm -hmm. Are you going to take someone struggling with PORN and go over to their house with some magazines to show them you support them? No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, honey, I'm not suffering from being queer. I'm enjoying every minute of it. In this next segment, watch as Paul and Morgan react to a viral clip of famous trans influencer Dylan Mulvaney. Now I know I can find love. I know I can still be a performer. I know that I can have a family. I want to be a mom one day. And I absolutely can. And that's why the narrative still has a long way to go. Because when I was grieving boy Dylan, I didn't know those things were even accessible to me. I absolutely can be. I want to be a mom one day. This male says male dresses woman i want to be a mom one day and i absolutely can morgan just what are your immediate thoughts being someone who's literally holding your baby during this live video you just went through a difficult pregnancy what are your reactions to that not everyone who um is a mom is someone who carried their child so let's just make that clear but okay a mom is a biological woman there's that's just that I, at first when I heard that, I wanted to get angry. You know, I did get angry and like kind of disgusted. But hmm. then the more I think on it, the more just sad I am for, you know, Dylan and for other men out there who have gone through, I don't know what someone has to go through to get to this point of, it's going to sound kind of mean, but delusion um, I don't know what you have to go through in your life to get to that, but it probably isn't very good stuff. And so I just feel sad for these guys who are very lost and confused and desiring something that they can never have. Dylan can adopt a child and have that child call him mom all he wants, but he will never be a mother. And what, Morgan? At least Dylan is happy. You're the one who doesn't respect yourself enough to live your own truth. I can't imagine living life on my truth. <laughs> That's a scary thought. How sad. We've experienced this talking about Demi Lovato and stuff. How dare you not use their preferred pronouns. And Allie B. Stuckey said it well. Yeah, we are Bible-believing Christians who see that God made male and female and said that it was good. And so to go against what God calls good and to call someone by their preferred pronouns is just something that we can't do in in good conscience it's just confusion to a new level and the idea of just you can't be a they them people you can't i'm sorry pick one or the other at least yeah you can't be a they them because a pronoun is just a part of speech um but you can be a person and right now you're being a bad one the fact that so many people are struggling with their identity. We're having a lot of people go through identity crises. Crises? Crises. crises. Um, and we're seeing even Christians going through these identity crises. And it's alarming to me, but it's, it's sad to me because they feel like putting their pronouns is like helping them like really solidify their identity or they feel like putting a flag or whatever is really helping solidify their identity and where they stand and who they are. And to me, it's just like as believers, we, we get to have this confidence 
in our identity as a child of God. Like, that's our identity. Child of God. So if you want to put that in your pronouns, go for it. Oh, so you identify as a Christian? You don't identify as a woman anymore? That's perfectly reasonable. I'll update the way I refer to you. Um, but what about Paul? Because so far he's identified as a mother, James Dean, and a black person. I'm announcing it in today's video. I am a mother now. So if I were to say I, you know, I identify now as James Dean. You guys react how you want. Haters react how you want. But I'm genuinely asking why the heck race to me is something. If you tell me if you disagree. I think it's something that is less intense or less permanent than literally gender. I would think to be able to say, hey, you know, I, I grew up around a lot of this ethnic group and I started, I really love their ethnic group and I actually love it even more than maybe my own. Guys, I want you to start calling me black. Okay, I played a lot of basketball when I was younger, hung out with a lot of good basketball black players, went to their homes, got absorbed in their culture. I'm black now. Is that cool to do? Can I do that? No. Why not? not? Because Dylan just said, you know, whatever you feel, whatever you call yourself, you don't even, I, I don't even have to paint my body. I don't even have to do anything else. <laughs> this is the most accepting our world has been with the LGBTQ community, yet they are one of the highest communities ending their lives. Oh, she really said that without any shred of irony, huh? Um, yeah, I wonder why they have the highest suicide rate, Morgan. Do you really want to think about that or do you just want to live in denial? Because uh, this isn't funny. People are actually fucking dead. You'd rather talk about how Paul was a virgin and that really upset him that you had sex. Yeah, that's really important, guys. All of their arguments are stupid. Their beliefs are harmful, um, downright dangerous. Sometimes they say shit that is just so off the wall that I can't even believe that it's actually coming out of Paul's mouth. Is it not fair to ask or to bring up someone saying, let's go back to slavery. And I know like, oh, don't, don't make comparisons. I'm just asking, okay? Morgan, tell me if I'm crazy. <laughs> okay. Could we not have said that about slave owners? Could we not have said, as she said, it's a practical conversation about women's rights. Could we not have said, hey, no, slavery is actually... Stop. The people that are against slavery, cut that out. This is about slave owners' rights. They have farms. They have plantations to take care of. And if we suddenly abolish slavery, think about them. Their lives are going to be greatly... Mm -hmm. They're going to be in, in distress to keep up with the demands. Yeah. Is that not fair? It's going to be a big inconvenience to their lives and to their life goals. Because there are a lot of these young plantation owners that have big dreams and big goals mm -hmm. and you're going to strip their slaves away. Am I not allowed to say this stuff? Cause I think it's relevant mm -hmm. cause slave owners rights are humans rights. Oh. <laughs> Am I not allowed to say that? What do you guys think? I think that there's definitely overlap there. There. Yeah. It is very interesting. And I see someone in the comments. This is so dis disingenuous, Paul. Hey, I'm not being disingenuous. I think it's an absolutely, I'm, I'm not saying like they're the exact same, obviously, but I think that's a very healthy comparison. Um, I don't have a lot to say about their COVID response. It was exactly what you think it was. They were anti-mask, anti-vax, uh, really into their freedom. Morgan's dad, I believe, did get COVID and he even said that people should get vaccinated and that was probably really hard on Morgan. Um, they're idiots. And um, they also recently went out of their way to make fun of positive affirmations for your baby. So if you're hearing that correctly, they were making fun of being nice to your baby. I am strong. I am loved by the king of the universe. I am adorable. I'm the best baby ever. I am strong. I am capable. I am independent. I am a powerful being. I am a powerful young woman who can do everything a man can do. Oh. Just kidding. He's a young he's a young man. Mm. Well, I uh 
really wish they were my parents. After a while, maybe the algorithm was kicking their ass a little bit, or maybe they got tired of being so incorrect all the time. But um, it seems that Paul and Morgan were getting tired of the old political humdrum and rattle. And it's like, no, race, 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 or gender, 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 gender. So they switched up their channel theme once again to uh, being all about sex. So, uh, can't wait for that. Now, before you guys get alarmed, <laughs> calm down a little bit, okay? Um, we are gonna be making some adjustments, some changes, content related, but don't, don't start panicking, okay? <laughs> Here's what we're thinking. We have kind of come to realize we have a sweet spot. And <laughs> we think at least one of our sweet spots mm -hmm. is love. Love. I mean, let's just say the love doctors have lied, <laughs> line, dormant, lied, lied laid, laid, dormant <laughs> long enough. And all that to say, the love doctors are back. Seeing as how these two are experts on exactly nothing, and they already have some highly problematic takes on things like consent. Here we go. As long as it's consensual, then God is for it. As long as it's consensual, me and my boyfriend were consensual. So <laughs> it is oh so great. They just, they love the social justice warriors. They just, they, that word like overshadows God's word. Yeah. The word consensual, they love that word. I just can't wait to see what they have to say about biblical missionary sex in the dark, shirts on for the purposes of procreation only. Far too many Christian marriages having subpar sex, they're settling, and they're just kind of like, yeah, this is just how it is. Our sex is, if we're being honest, it's just okay, or it's not very good. It, I do not think it has to be that way. Six years in, and lube is a pretty common thing for us, but those early days, <laughs> yes. Not that common. <laughs> lube is decently common. Decently common for us. You say more often than not, no lube? Yeah. Really? Huh. How is sex when your wife is on her period for a man? Uh, there's a movie from the <laughs> mid-2000s, There Will Be Blood. <laughs> um, it's a very intense movie. I believe that every woman can orgasm close to every time she has sex. Yeah. Let's be real, we don't. Yeah. But I would say it. Well, I don't. <laughs> Not we, buddy. <laughs> hey, we're we're one. Uh, <laughs> we're one flesh. And I, it was one of those things where I think growing up, I just did not. It's kind of like guys have hair, girls don't. That was literally kind of in my my thought process. <laughs> oh, it's it's very educational. Okay. And I remember like when I saw in college, they made me watch a woman give birth, and I was kind of like, ah. Uh. Okay. I think. Oftentimes, like when you know people freak out about oral, they're just like, it's you know, that's the only sexual act that's happening, and then like the couple's finished and they just did oral. Oral is oftentimes a part of foreplay, and it's often a part of um, stimulating the other person, warming up the other person um, for other things, you know, just penetration. And I've had friends literally say, Hey, I watched you and Morgan talk about sex answer a certain question and it made me uncomfortable let's just say without getting too graphic <laughs> right there is a baby um oh. they're, they're crowding the <laughs> oven space they're crowding the cave in oh ways i'm goodness. sorry that's gracious cut it edit it <laughs> i edit. can't this is live buddy <laughs> said paul didn't you see that kanye west posted something sensual uh, and then she ended it with, where is your discernment? Fair enough. They are really good friends with Girl Defined. Um, and I have a couple clips here. Um, this one is Morgan talking about losing her virginity and the shame that she felt and Paul making it worse. So before I met Paul, I was in a three and a half year long relationship with a guy who was not really walking with the Lord. Um, I knew God. My heart was for him, but I just kind of went down the wrong path and continued to stray down that path with this guy. 
Um, and I ended up, I lost my virginity to him and it was just a battle, um, of me feeling completely hopeless, worthless, uh, terrible, Mm -hmm. guilty, guilty, just all of the bad things I felt about myself. And when I first met Paul, I are on our first date. He was just kind of telling me it was very clear. He didn't even have to tell me. It was very clear that he was pure. He was saving himself for his wife. And I just immediately was like, this guy is not going to want anything to do with me. Like I had repented. I had turned from that sin and, you know, totally started over. Um, but I just knew and felt like he just wasn't going to want anything to do with me. And that was not the case. (laughs) <laughs> Here we are, three years later. <laughs> yeah. So what 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 happened? Because I think a lot of girls, for any of us who've yeah. made past mistakes, and we're like, I've made this mistake. I don't think that one that God could ever forgive me, or if God forgives me, I don't think an earthly guy who's following the Lord is ever going to be able to forgive me. Ever going to be able to look past that and say, yes, there's forgiveness, there's redemption, there's restoration. This woman is whole in Christ. And so, Paul, how was that for you? I mean, really having that gospel lens to see Morgan from that perspective of redemption. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think different men are going to have different levels of grace on, I I do think it it is a struggle for some men that perhaps have really been desiring purity and, um, and then they start dating a woman and they hear that it could be challenging for them. I will start out by saying though, that every godly man needs to be able to forgive and needs to be able to say, Oh my goodness, like God, has wiped you white as snow if yeah. you've asked for forgiveness, and I will too. But it still can be challenging for men. And I have guys message me on Instagram saying, you know, I've kept myself pure and now I'm dating this girl. And she just told me that, you know, she lost her virginity and that's really difficult for me. And my response is, yeah, you know, forgive them, don't hold it against them. But there may be, that could be something that, that sticks with you and it's just really hard to get past. And I don't mean to prolong that aspect because for me, Morgan shared that with me. She was very real, very open on our very first date. And she shared it with me. And I, I just had grace to, to be like, she isn't who she used to be. She's, you know, asked God for forgiveness and, and she's in a different place. Like, come on, I, I forgive you. Let's, your heart is for the Lord. I'm not going to look back. Let's go. So um, <laughs> it was really good. It was the best first date that I had ever had. And what do you know? These two ding dongs even went to the cursed 2020 Girl Defined Super Spreader Conference. And I am on the lookout for a bootleg version of the video, if anybody can find it, because um, I went to the Girl Defined Conference website and it was $45. To download a video of the conference so no i'm not i'm not doing that would love to know what they talked about i'm sure it was the same old shit but um instead you'll have to settle for this super uncomfortable clip and so i like prayed on it right then and was like lord like if this is something you are convicting me of right now would you convict paul over it as well and so like i think later that night i went and i had a conversation with paul i don't know if we should be using contraception anymore i don't know if we'll get pregnant immediately maybe yeah, I brought that to Paul and he was like, uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I remember the first night that we went to have sex that I was like, I started crying. So I was like, okay, like I know that I said I trust the Lord, but like, yeah, oh. do this. what if I get pregnant? And that really fucking sucks, Morgan. I'm sorry that Purity Culture did that to you. And I'm sorry you feel so ashamed of your own sexuality to the point where it makes you feel uh, scared and cry when you do these things with Paul. I don't really know what else to say to that. Um, I wish that I hadn't seen that. I will say it is notable that they gave away their dog too recently. So hope you have a better life, crusty, squishy. Like they also have a close friendship with another evil YouTube couple, Nate and Sutton. And yes, before you ask, I am going to do a video about them eventually. What steps did you all take to stay pure before marriage? We're going deep, you guys. Mm. <laughs> we're going, we're going. <laughs> this is what our people love. So one thing that I told Sutton right off the bat was that if we go past a certain point physically, that I can't be with you anymore. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> I was, let me just say, <clears throat> I heard you say that in your all's last video, and I was even a little surprised because yeah. totally is something I would have said, <laughs> but to the world, to our haters out there that hear that, and I can just see them bristling and being like, 
How oh, dare damn. you threaten? <laughs> threaten and shame. <laughs> He, yeah. he was standing up for his boundaries and he was mm-hmm. saying, like, if you can't be along with me in the purity that I desire for our relationship, it's not going to work out. That was a bold move. And you said that to Sutton, mm-hmm. like, early on? Yeah. Yeah, early wow. on. Wow. For those of you watching, I'm not saying that, Sutton, if you cross these boundaries, you're a horrible person or that you're not a Christian or mm-hmm. any of those things. I was just saying that, like, I, w- I want to take honoring God very seriously in our relationship and... If we cross those boundaries, then, you know, unfortunately, it's not going to work out. Recently, Paul and Morgan and Nate and Sutton went on a little family vacation together, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I wouldn't bring a three-month-old on a plane, but that's her choice. I'm not even that mad about it because it's not the worst thing she's ever done. I mean... It's not like she wore her son on her chest while she lifted heavy equipment at the gym. She did? Oh. Then never mind. So recently, um, by recently, past couple months, Paul and Morgan have been shifting away from not just charismatic Christianity, but hyper charismatic, as they call it, because they really want to separate themselves from the bad Christians. And what I could gather, it was they went to like a Pentecostal ish hipster megachurch, like a Bethel or a Hillsong. Um, and they were having a rough go because they were going through a lot of like people prophesying that Morgan would get pregnant and then she wouldn't get pregnant. And of course that would be super upsetting. They had talked about people like incorrectly predicting that Trump would still be president and that kind of upset them that they weren't allowed to like question leadership. Um, and maybe they, um, didn't want to speak in tongues as much. Um, they talked a lot about, you know, just the high peer pressure environment of going to a hyper charismatic church about a year and a half ago we're at a church service the uh of traveling prophet prophet or evangelist i'm not really sure he does the altar call i go up there because i was i was part of it was feeling like man let's let, let's i was responding you know i felt touched in my spirit mm-hmm. p- p- perhaps to go up there what proceeds he i'm the first one in line he puts <laughs> his hand on my head and what happens next? I feel pushed. He's he's trying to push me over, partly. Mm-hmm. And I I was open to it. I was I I felt confident, not in a skeptical way, but in a way of like he's gonna slay some people in the spirit if that is such a thing. And I'm not saying it's totally not, but what proceeded was he forcefully tried to push me. I wasn't gonna fall by being pushed. If the Holy Spirit came over me and I fell out, fine. But that did not happen. He continues down the line and probably about half of the people get slain in the spirit. I personally, from my observation, think it was more of an emotional response than it was a being overcome by the Holy Spirit. Emotional peer pressure. This prophet's pushing you and you're not going to fall over. He's the prophet, the traveling prophet. Yeah. You know, there's there's a lot of stuff going on. So, yeah. Through their journey uh, out of hyper charismatic, they talk to this woman named Melissa Doherty, who I am not fond of just because she's a like Christian apologetist. She's into apologetics. Growing up, it was uh, our, our church was open to the things of the spirit. They invited the moves of the spirit. There was occasionally prophecy. There was um, just like a a freedom in the worship that felt, I guess, as some people would call it, uh, what would you describe it? Because you being a worship leader, prophetic worship. Spontaneous worship. um, Yeah, didn't. A little more out of the box. Mm -hmm. Wasn't so stiff. (laughs) I also wanted to um, stop to mention, um, Morgan was talking about spontaneous worship. That's something that I saw a lot of with Hillsong and Bethel. It's a whole thing. Here's a clip of somebody doing spontaneous worship. This is what it is. I was saying, um, I did feel like many people would look at the churches I grew up in as charismatic, but then, uh, I got older and, uh, actually before I met Morgan, I started getting more involved in, in the charismatic movement 
the hyper charismatic. I'm sorry. Yeah, let me say that again. <laughs> before I met before I met Morgan, I started getting more involved in the hyper charismatic movement. And for many, I'm sure watching, um, Melissa, I'm sure you kind of can relate to this. There's something from almost like when you're an outsider looking into the hyper charismatic movement as someone who loves the Lord and wants the fullness that God has for me, you look at the hyper charismatic movement and you're like, they have found mm. kind of the missing piece mm -hmm. because look at them. They are so passionate. They are so on fire. They are so confident mm -hmm. in what the Lord is saying. Um, maybe even, and this is where it gets kind of sketchy, even beyond specifically what the Bible says, because they're so prophetic and they're always operating in, in this kind of almost abstract prophetic. So it's like, uh, yes, please. I, I want that. <laughs> yeah. Miraculous power. <laughs> Is that making sense? The blessings. The, the blessings. Yeah. Yeah. The That's the allure to it. I'm so glad you went over that. And when Morgan talks about these weird prophecies, like they got really specific. I don't think I was ever given a specific date, name, or time. Mm. I, not that I can remember, and maybe it did happen, but I feel like, one, I would remember that because well, I... Well, you did get the specific prophecy about getting pregnant. Oh, yes. There was oh. that one. Yes. Oh. Yeah, there was one... That one hurt, yeah. ...prophecy yeah. that was spoken hurt over for us, um, set, like, a while back, and... Basically, he told us to go home and create life <laughs> um, and that it would be done like that that night it was going to happen. So along with this leaving the charismatic movement situation, we got to talk about the ex-friend. Uh, so Morgan and Paul used to be really close with um, a girl named Hannah Williamson, who is another fundy uh, YouTuber and influencer. Um, and she comes from that hyper charismatic uh, tradition. So miracles, prophecies, healings, um, all the same stuff that Paul and Morgan were trying to distance themselves from. And I don't know why they're not friends. I've seen some people speculate maybe it had to do with like prophecies of Morgan getting pregnant and it not happening and like her not wanting to be associated with that. I also wonder if it's because the public opinion has turned on Hannah. I've never liked her, but for different reasons. Um, you search her name on YouTube, you see a lot of people talking about how she's demonic and, and all these different things. She's a false prophet. Like... This is not that serious. That might be why they're distancing themselves. I'm not going to speculate on any other interpersonal drama because God knows I don't want people doing that to my life. It got to the point where people were directly asking Morgan about it. And what do you know? I have a clip of that. The only reason I'm going to answer this is because it's been asked a lot. Oh, I know it. It's a lot. All right. Time to sober up. And I'm just going to go ahead and address it. But I want to address it obviously in a God honoring way. And I don't want anyone to think anything. Yeah, just whatever. So anywho, the assumption is I assume that you and Hannah Williamson are no longer friends. So this has been asked a lot. Like I said, um, I have nothing but love for Hannah. And I know she feels the same way. Um, but we are no longer friends. And I know, like, people would love the details and things, but I don't think that that's necessary. She is still a sister in Christ. Yes. We still believe her ministry is doing great things. And we wish and pray nothing but the best for her ministry and her life. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Friendships we're, come and go, right? Well, you said we're no longer friends. Like, that immediately is, like, that just sounds pretty, pretty yeah. harsh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like again it's we're sisters in christ but are we walking in life together on a daily basis like we once were no we're not and it was a really hard separation <laughs> it, all of you guys i'm sure have like gone separate ways from friends before you know that feeling it almost feels like a breakup <laughs> but um yeah so and and the <laughs> A, bit, a large reason we, we brought it up in this video, we've been asked about it a number of times. We've had a number of people comment mm -hmm. on just right, like video from last week. They right. just, or whatever, they comment and say, you know, where's Hannah Williamson been? Or in our DMs, hey, I haven't noticed Hannah Williamson because she's 
been in several of our videos from back when, and we're just trying to figure out how to navigate it. It's This is a new thing to navigate a public friendship that no longer is what it used to be. Yeah. And so I, I feel like there's it's, it is appropriate to at least mention it. We could go into more details, um, but kind of like Morgan said, the the paths that we're on, and it's hard anytime you have like a long distance friendship. It's it's challenging, and you really have to be invested. And um, it, it just it got to a point about a close to a year ago where it just uh, there was kind of a a, a split and. Uh, but like Morgan said, we still love her and we still bless her in the Lord, bless what she's doing. Yes. And because Paul and Morgan think that they're the funniest people on earth, they recently made a little like satire video sketch thing talking about um, how Reddit views their marriage. She's singing secular. Must have called a thousand in time. I'm sorry. No secular. No secular music. Yes. Amazing go. Grace. Go. Amazing. Oh, too poppy. Too poppy. Amazing Grace. How Good. sweet the sound. I'm a shell of my former self. What's up, guys? For today's morning munchie, God's not dead. He's surely alive. Hey. I'm really in labor. <laughs> Not now, babe. This is gonna go viral. He's living on the inside. I think I'm gonna have a baby. Munch on that. <laughs> oh, babe, I got too much work to do. <laughs> when is Trump gonna tweet again? Refresh. Oh, oh, gotcha, baby Luca. Woo! Sure is something, huh? There are a lot of misconceptions that I was so happy and oh my goodness, look at the joy in her eyes. Well, guess what, my friends? It's called acting. And I'm a good actress. In conclusion, despite all my complaints, I can respect the hustle. Paul and Morgan and myself are fellow YouTube creators relying on the charity of our followers to pay our bills. We are both beholden to the YouTube algorithm and we both make videos about fundamentalism, albeit from opposite directions. But because I'm also a YouTuber, I think I understand the game a little bit better than they do. Besides my views and subs routinely dunking on theirs, I know exactly why they do what they do. The controversial conservative shit is simply much better for views. The algorithm loves it. I just think it's unnecessary that they make content like this when I do think they could be doing something more productive and more entertaining. Because how pathetic is it that all of their views are from hate watchers and 12 year old zealots. I'm not really sure which is worse at this point. And since I'm a better YouTuber and let's face it, a better person, I've come up with some ideas to help their channel. And how about you make videos about maybe scripture that inspired you to be celibate or scripture that helped you with your depression, Morgan. You could even make a video on homemaking or decorating advice. You could make a video about how to leave a toxic church. You could make a video about Christian music that you actually do like. These are all non-controversial videos that you could make. So you're welcome for all these video ideas. I won't even ask for credit if you use any of them. And this advice also extends to people like Abby Shapiro, who is the queen of veering into other people's lanes. You can be conservative all you want. We have free speech in this country, but if you're going to have these ice cold takes, then you need to be prepared to take the heat. On the contrary, if you want people to stop hating you, then you need to quit acting hateful. You have a new baby. Why don't you talk about how cute he is or what products you ended up using from your baby shower? Maybe a video about how you chose his name or, you know, what kind of books you're reading to him right now. You don't need to use Use your new status as a mom to belittle others just because it gives you an unearned sense of superiority. I know your self-esteem has probably taken a nosedive since marrying Paul, but come on, you don't need to take it out on everyone else. Remember, these people are self-absorbed bullies who wouldn't think twice about making fun of you or calling me an ugly whore. I know what it's like to feel simultaneously famous yet 
incredibly isolated and lonely. I know what it's like to get hateful DMs from people who wish me violence. I know the depersonalizing, out-of-body feeling of seeing strangers make posts about me on Reddit. Paul and Morgan, I need you to know this. I understand this shit on a visceral level. We have a lot more in common than we do different. I also struggle with mental illness. I've been traumatized. I've lost friends. I'm in a lot of pain. But I don't take that pain and project it onto others and demonize and assign moral failure to normal human interactions. What I'm saying is there is no excuse for this problematic, hateful, and ignorant behavior that both of you are guilty of. It's not funny or cute. People are dying because they can't live with themselves because of the teachings of your religion and sometimes just the words that come out of your mouth. Do better because I know you're capable of it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. It sure uh, took a long time to make, but I put all my heart and soul into it. Remember to consensually smash that like and subscribe button. Follow me on social media. I do have merch, including several um, abortion fundraisers over on Bonfire. Remember to check out my link tree if you go on Instagram, because I do have uh, several articles that are written about me as, and a couple of podcast appearances that I've been on. We have a Discord, which you can only get on if you become a patron, which is $3, um, patreon.com slash Fundy Fridays. I also occasionally do streams over there and every now and then, every fucking blue moon, I'll have a poll on there for you. Um, we also did recently stream with Jordan and McKay and that is over on their channel. Um, we went to Utah and we built, well, we, uh, McKay and James built the um, Salt Lake Temple out of Brickham Young, legally distinct Lego pieces. Um, and we did also film a vlog, uh, which is over on the aforementioned Patreon. I love you guys. Um, I love my job and I love my life. Let's just say that. And I will see you very soon. I don't really know what else to say. Remember to be gay and do crime and be nice and drink water. Woo! I want Kanye. I want Kanye. Man. I mean, could he have put that much better? Just for show, you live like that, you live with ghosts.